So there needs to be a, a supportive environment in which they can speak, but they also have to engage that environment. Um, if there is a credible allegation that is made, whether or not it's true, credible doesn't mean true. Credible simply means it makes sense. You may find out it's not true, but if it's credible, you must deal with it immediately. So there must be a credible, if there's a credible scenario that is brought to, to, the, to the fore, there must be an immediate intervention, including a physical separation of abuse and abusees. And in many cases, it's not just the spouse that is being abused. Um, it's not just a spouse that has been abused. There could be children being abused as well. Uh, and let me deal with this real quick, actually. I know I wasn't asked, but this is a very valid question to answer. The age-old statement of, well, you know, you must stay in a marriage to avoid, in essence, you must not get separated or divorced because of the effect on children. While that is true, that the statistics are true, and again, this is where we talk about threading the needle, right? Uh, we must always make a balance. It is true that single parent homes statistically produce more dysfunctional children. That is true. And I am the product of one, right? I was raised by a single parent from my teens, you know, till, well, first of all, from when I was born to when my mother got married, right? Because I was so, I had a single parent. And then from when my mother got married to, again, in my late teens, when my stepfather, for some reason, you know, was separated from our family. So I'm an example. I'm not pointing fingers. It is true that the best scenario is a loving home with both parents. True. And that divorce can have, or separation can have, lasting psychological trauma on a child. True. The flip side is an environment of systemic abuse, physical or emotional, can also have just as damaging an effect on those children. And many times, the reason why, in my opinion, the stats are skewed to the multiple parent home is, it is hard for a home, not impossible, to stay unseparated if there is systemic abuse. So when we look at the two parent households, they are skewed towards slightly dysfunctional but fairly normal interactions. But it is, in my opinion, potentially more damaging to a child to witness a parent systemically abused In fact, that child is more likely to have a destructive view and relationship with the abuser than if there was at least a temporal separation. Hopefully the issue gets dealt with or if worse, if not, than a permanent one. So we must address that. That sometimes it's not just the spouse who needs to be removed. There are other people who may need to be removed too. Uh, and then, like I said, the issue of the reconciliation from Paul's statement in, in Corinthians comes in uh, dealing with the fact that the abusee has a right to say, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Let's make this clear. If the abuse is confirmed, physical or serious emotional, not just we had an argument and we said things to each other, there must always be the right given to the abusee to say, I can't go back into that. Now, according to Paul, there are some circumstances in which, according to the, to the Bible, sorry, Exodus and Deuteronomy, where the person is free to go. There are other circumstances that are less clear cut, in which case you need to tell them, like Paul said, well, you can be separated, but you must remain single until such a time as there can hopefully be a reconciliation. In essence, this person is responding correctly to the intervention. We're not sending you back yet, but it's looking promising. Hold on a second. Now, I do not believe this includes areas of serious physical violence. Let's be honest with you. So, if a man basically stabbed his wife and she survived, and she says, I'm not going back, she ain't going back. 
Simple. So I'm talking about. I'm talking about the gray areas. The 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 where do we draw the line between what is a normal contentious circumstance and abuse where it's not clear. Now in that process, if the alleged abuser cannot be patient enough to go through that process and they walk the bible says at that point where they violated the reconciliation process they are an infidel they are an unbeliever the believing spouse is not bound at that point that person is free also there must be a system in my opinion of now let me stress this a system of care that one the person engages and two the person does not abuse because many times a person who suffered abuse will themselves become abrasive and abusive. And there are times where as a person who is tasked with supporting them, for the sanity of both of you, you may need to step back a little bit and let somebody else have a go. Does that make sense? So it's, 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 it's delicate, but there should be a system offered. And finally, that system has to be accepted by that person usually when there has already been a relationship of trust and submission that is not selective in its approach 